Thank you, thank you. I'm coming! <laughs> Ready? <laughs> hey, is that cool? Awesome. I want to talk about like when I started, you know, going to school and stuff, a lot of people put me down. You know what I mean? Like people tease each other. I mean, people come up and say, hey, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. You know, you lose some weight and you're like, you go home and you look at yourself in the mirror and go, I'm fat, right? And so many people tease each other. Oh, you know, you're too short, you're too tall, you look whatever. You know, different hair and all that. It doesn't matter. See, the thing is, when you're in school, when you're growing up in life, it actually sort of matters to people how you look. And then it matters to you because it matters to others. Why? Why does it matter how you look? Because if they don't like you, then who will? If they don't accept you, then who will? And the fear that we have is that we're going to be alone. That we're not good enough. And, you know, we have to change ourselves. And, you know, so many people put me down and say, Nick, you look too weird and no one's really your friend and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I couldn't change anything. It's not like just fixing my hair one day and everything's fine. It's not like, you know, just whatever. I couldn't change my circumstance. I couldn't just one day wake up and say, hey, give me arms and legs. I need arms and legs. You know what I mean? Like, I went to a bodybuilder, you know, and said, can you make me some arms and legs? No, I'm joking. <laughs> bodybuilder, you get it? <laughs> right? So this is the thing. You know, I go up to people, can you give me a hand? You know, I'm just joking. Yeah. But it was so hard because people put me down. And I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that I was a failure, that I'd never ever be somebody who people would like or people would accept. And it was so hard, man, I thought to myself, I, you know, I can't go on, the, go on the soccer field like everybody else, and I can't ride my bike, and I can't skateboard, and all these sort of things, and I started getting depressed. I thought, what kind of purpose do I have to live? I mean, do you, are, are you just here to live to die? I mean, is there not a purpose for me? Is there not a purpose in life? And I had questions and no answers, and I asked my mom and dad, why did this happen? I asked doctors, why did this happen? And they, they don't know. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have, though, is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure when no one really likes you, no one really cares about you? And it's not really to say that, hey, you need someone to come up and say, hey, really, I, I like you, I care about you. No, it's not that, but it's the fact that people put you down. People don't even look you in the eye. People ask you how you are, and you say fine, but you're not fine, and they'll, know, they'll never know that. I tell you, life is interesting. Life's a journey. See this phone here? Let's say that I want to go to the phone, right? And I start from over here. Now, to get to the phone... It's not like I'm going to start meditating and going hum, right, and float across the air, right? It's not going to, it's not going to work. It's not like I'm going to go hum and woo, you know, it's not going to work. So I have to take one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. You can only take one step at a time. I don't care how big your step is, it's only one step at a time. You can't do two steps in one. You understand? So it's like one step at a time and... You take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction, sort of get lost along the way, and sometimes you fall down. Now, to illustrate my point, I'm going to jump off the table, do a back twist, and land on the floor. Okay? Is that cool? Are you ready? Oh, there's a clock there. Okay, can you move the clock for a second, please? Beautiful, beautiful. All right. You ready? So, uh, are you guys ready? Just let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? Okay, ready? One... Two, I'm joking, man. Are you serious? <laughs> Just put the clock back there. If I did that, I'll break my arm or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but honestly, along the way, you might fall down like this. Ready? <whistles> right? <laughs> Hello! Right? So what do you do when you fall down? Get back up. Everybody knows to get back up because if I start walking, I'm not going to get anywhere. 
But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. You, so, you so, sort of put a mask on your face when you come to school and pretend that everything's okay when it's not and you go home and lay in your bed when no one's looking at you when you don't have to impress anybody and you're yourself. And fear comes in. You know the fear that you have as soon as you walk into the doors of your house. Maybe there's a broken home. Maybe you have doubt in your life. Maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future and it scares you. Maybe you're, about, you, maybe you're worried about what people think of you, what people say about you. Just that fear paralyzes you. And I just want to ask you today, do you think you have hope? Because I tell you, I'm down here, face down, and I have no arms, no legs. It should be impossible for me to get back up. I mean, you go home and tie the legs and arms of your brothers and, and sisters and, and like push them down <laughs> and see how long it's going to take them to get back up. You know what I mean? You know, you can tell them that you'll see them tomorrow. You know what I mean? But this is the thing. It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. Does that make sense? And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up. There's still hope. I'm not here today to tell you that I understand your pain. I don't know how it feels to be abused. I don't know how it feels to feel, quote, fat and you've got an eating disorder. I don't know how it feels to have a broken home. I don't know how it feels. But I know how it feels to have a broken heart. And I know how it feels to be alone. And I want you to know that I found my strength in Jesus Christ and you're going to find your strength in whatever you find it in. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. It matters how you're going to finish. Are you going to finish strong? And you will find that strength to get back up like this. How did I get from depressed to who I am today? Because I tell you, I was depressed. When I was age eight, I used to concentrate on the things I didn't have. I wish I had arms and legs, and I wish I could do this, but what can I do? You see, I have a choice, and that's what I want to talk about today, choices. I can either be angry for not having arms and legs or be thankful for my chicken drumstick. <laughs> and you see, I can still do a lot of things. At home, I can brush my teeth, comb my hair, get myself ready in the morning. And I'm traveling around the world. It, it's, it's amazing. But I had to ask myself a couple questions. And the first question was really, who am I? Who am I? I'm Nick Vujicic, but who is that? And it's funny how the friends around you sort of determine who you are. You change yourself. You come to school. And everybody swore around me at high school, so I started swearing. Why? Because it's the cool thing to do. Everybody swears. So I don't want to be left out. And I want to be accepted, so I started swearing. You go to a party, everybody's drinking, so you drink. Why? Well, everybody else around me is doing a big deal. And you start losing yourself, and you start putting your security in temporary things. You start putting your happiness in things that won't last. You can get drunk all you like, but in the morning, you're going to be sober with a headache with the same problems. You want to be high the rest of your life on drugs? Everybody say, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. Well, why? Why do we even go there? It's either out of curiosity, peer pressure, or trying to escape reality. Basically, three things. That's why we go to drug 